Rich, when was the last time you went to the gym? And I don't mean the regular gym, the content gym. Today we're speaking with Drake Cyphers, the owner of Content Gym, and we talk about how entrepreneurs can really get their message out if they can learn how to produce content in an organized fashion with the right equipment, the right lighting, the right setup, and the right production. And what Drake Cyphers does is helps entrepreneurs with a system on how to build authority, credibility, and trust in an asynchronous way meaning you don't actually have to be present. You put in time one time and it pays dividends for potentially years to come. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think entrepreneurs today and leaders are understanding that video content is king. The static content doesn't work anymore. Whether you're trying to talk to your team internally or trying to talk to customers externally, content can work for you and your business. Let's jump right into this conversation with Drake Cyphers. Hey, entrepreneurs, are you looking to take your business to the next level? I'm sure you are. Listen up. The Entrepreneurs United Empowerment Experience is coming to Austin, Texas on October 2nd to the 4th, and you do not want to miss it. At this exclusive event limited to just 50 entrepreneurs, you'll have the opportunity to connect with other like-minded business owners and CEOs, learn from industry experts, and enjoy unique experiences that you will not find anywhere else. The Entrepreneurs United Experience will leave you feeling inspired, energized, and ready to take on whatever opportunities and challenges come your way. So mark your calendars now for October 2nd to the 4th and join us at the Omni Barton Creek Resort in Austin, Texas. You will not regret it. Visit entrepreneursunited.us to learn more and secure your spot today. Hey, Drake, welcome to the Entrepreneurs United podcast. We're happy to have you this morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Tell us about you work with leaders to build personal brands with them and for them. How did this even become a space that a personal brand became a thing for leaders and something that they need? In my last business, while I was building it right before I sold it, I was just consuming crazy amounts of podcasts and YouTube content, stuff like that. And what I realized is there's a lot of asymmetry in right now in social media with the amount of organic reach that you could get relative to the cost of what that would be if you were to do that for ads. And so when I was figuring out what I wanted to do after I sold my company, I was looking, I was like, if I were doing anything for myself while I'm figuring stuff out, I would want to do this. And so I started out building a system and I built a system for myself and I figured, oh, this is something that, that other people could use. So I just was started selling spare capacity in the machine. But right now with social media, with podcasting, with all of these things, you're able to, to connect with leaders in a way that that you couldn't really do it before. The old cringy Instagram, here's a picture with me in my Lambo with an inspirational quote underneath is that most entrepreneurs find that kind of repulsive, but on video or on audio, as you guys are well aware with podcasts, you can really get to know someone and connect with them. And by having that brand, you're able to asynchronously build authority, credibility, and trust online. And so it equates to better pricing power, better pricing power. It's easier to get customers and you're able to scale yourself in a way that you couldn't do really before and in a way that people actually understand the real you and not this fake veneer of you. Thanks for that. Can you define for me, what's the problem that you're positioned to solve? So an average entrepreneur who's listening to this podcast, how could they identify, yeah, I think I want to keep listening to this podcast because I may have that problem. What's the problem you're positioned to solve? The real big thing is people who get paid to think all their intellectual property, all the things that they do, whether you're executive or a leader, is so intangible. It can be hard to communicate. And until you get usually in person in a face-to-face -face coffee meeting or whatever meeting that we're doing in, in real life. And so what I'm solving is being able to take that and produce. So in my instance with my company, we produce video at a scale that normal entrepreneurs who are going through, let's say, an agency couldn't do. And then the process of being able to, I'm traveling right now, so I have a mobile setup, right? So this mobile setup uh, makes it easy for me to do things. But when I'm normally setting it up for people, it's in an office with click two buttons and you have great lighting, great sound, and you're able to establish, like I said, your authority, credibility, and trust online. Okay. So if I'm an entrepreneur and I know that 
I am trying to communicate really the intangible, mm -hmm. it's typically reserved to be done face to face. Mm -hmm. I've got a problem. My problem yeah. is there are only so many face to face meetings I can have. And mm -hmm. because it's intangible, it is going to require a few more words and explanation on what I'm trying to communicate, whether it be with a very large team or a customer base or whoever it is. And you're saying, hey, come to me. I built this system that allows you to build authority, credibility, and trust that can happen asynchronously. In other words, you put time in once and it's distributed and available forever and doing work for you. Did I capture yeah. what you're up to? Yeah, that's a lot of it. For instance, one of my clients, he's an investor and a consultant, and he has very little time. So he meets with me one to two, one to three hours a month. And he's been able to produce in that time, roughly, I've produced 80 videos for him just from that, those two sit downs. And then we're able to distribute that. And he just closed $80,000 within less than a month of doing this. And anytime we're having a conversation, you go to any normal sales conversation, any normal copy conversation, especially a get to know you session, you and I could both, you and I both know that maybe 50 to 70% of that conversation all starts out about the same, right? And so where we're talking to someone, we're getting to know them, we're learning more about them, understanding who they are, what they care about. And so if you can take some of that and put that available so that it, with any sort of discovery search, whether it be Google or whatever social media platform you're on, you're able to move those meetings further into things that are deeper and would be more tailored for whoever you're talking to. And likewise, for the reverse works as well. So there's a sales philosophy around putting the customer in the center for them to be the hero of their story. That's very mm -hmm. personalized to that individual. It's occurring to me, how do you do that when there are static asynchronous videos? Or is what you're doing, is it Contrary to that, is it a different philosophy or do you support the philosophy of let's put the customer in the center of their story and they're the hero of it? How do you do that with asynchronous video? So I agree with you. That is, that's very important to do. Most customers for most people, their the problems may not be exactly the same, but they usually rhyme. And most people, when they are, and when you think about discovery just as a process, in the past, I would go to a realtor and I would look at the home. I would go with them and trust them to go through the home with me, right? But now with online, I can go do some discovery ahead of time on the homes that I like. So I'm able to refine things a little bit further. But now when I meet with said person, because they already know more about some of the basics, some of the generic things, I am able to actually spend more of our initial and subsequent encounters custom tailoring everything for the customer instead of having, instead of just having to do, give them the same bland get to know you stuff. And I can actually show my personality because and when you think about discovery, just in general, discovering anything, you are Google search, yellow pages, all of these things, the text, I can have AI spin up a website for me in 10, 15 minutes, right? So now if whether I know what I'm doing or I don't know what I'm doing, a website doesn't necessarily communicate that incredibly well. However, video and audio are very dynamic mediums that allow you to actually get to know a person better and they feel better about their decision because they've been able to do some due diligence ahead of time. So they usually come into the interaction feeling much better about their what they're doing because in the past, information was important and we were gatekeepers of information. So I have the secret sauce. You have to wait and come talk to me in order to give you the secret sauce. But now there's so much competition out there that you have to demonstrate your excellence and demonstrate that you know what you're doing as opposed to, as opposed to just saying, trust me, I know. So in this day and age, customers want to go do a bunch of research. You're making more information available to them. And... The repetitive information discovery a customer does with you, let's just get that out of the way. The initial introduction, let us tell you a little bit about yourself. You're looking for information on us anyway. Let us feed that so that when we actually have a conversation face-to-face -face or voice-to-voice, -voice, we actually are talking all about you because you've already learned about us. Exactly. And it makes, the, it, makes it more of efficient use of time for the customer. And let's be real. I don't know. I know for me, most of the time I enjoy the 
like getting into more of the nitty gritty with the customer and actually figuring out how to solve their problems rather than trying to educate them as much on who I am, what I do. And so that's, I think that allows for better interactions with people. Drake, the name of your company is Content Gym. And the connection you made with me moments ago was I have a client comes to see me one to three hours a month, pop out 80 videos and two visits that we now use for that, for that client, that leader. And I think there are a lot of leaders. I could probably raise my hand and say, I'm probably one of them who would love to create more content, but I don't go to the gym for content. I struggle and go, eh, I'm not really sure this is good. I'm not really sure if I, I don't know. Is the lighting going to be okay? What is my message? So is it fair to say that much like a personal trainer, that that's why you chose that name, that, hey, I'm going to be your personal trainer to help you generate more content and the content that's going to display you in the best light. Is that kind of the the name there? Content. That's gym? part of it. That's a lot of it. That, that encompasses a lot of the idea behind it. Part of it also was, so we think of content and filmmaking. It's Content has been considered a derivative of filmmaking, right? Sure. We're essentially the typical website. We do blah at our company and the same boring web video that's been around for the last 15 years. That's a derivative of the film industry. When you think about the way that gets produced, it's something that has to be that's static, that's done rarely, it's done on special occurrences. And then we take business owners and pretend that they're professional actors and that they're going to read their lines and get it all perfect. Instead, the idea is that you don't go to the gym once and say, oh, I'm good. You don't go to the gym once a year and say, oh, I'm good. You go consistently and it's more of an evolving process that you get the benefits from right away and you get better over time. Nobody walks into a gym and benches 400 pounds unless they're some athletic freak, sure. but you start low and you work your way up and you get better and progress over time. And like you said, it is helpful when you have a trainer who, you know, is able to, who knows you, knows what your message you're trying to get out there and is able to walk you through these things in a meaningful way. And as far as like the setup and everything, like I said, right now I'm traveling. So my setup, it's mobile and meant for that, but you'll set it up at your office to where it's set up to where it's, you hit two switches and now you actually have beautiful lighting. You actually have great sound and it's not something that you have to worry about. The idea of my last company was an internet service provider. And so in that, I learned that a lot of people, there's a lot of things that people don't care about. They don't know, they don't care. They just want to show up and have it work. And so building processes and systems so that it is easy, it removes the psychological barriers of figuring stuff out and setting up systems to where it's easy enough to where they walk in and boom, it's ready to go with very little effort on their part is the idea with what okay. I do. So Content Gym is not a software. Mm -hmm. It's not a hardware. It's more of a system. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. And you mentioned this client coming to you one to three hours a month and you sit down together and create these videos. What if I'm not in Oklahoma? How do you work with somebody remotely for that same output? Yeah, actually all of our stuff is remote. And so I do everything remotely. That's part of it is having a home set up. Now we have a software that we use that is different than Zoom. It's similar. It works similarly to Zoom, but it is it gives you better quality. You're not as reliant on the internet connection to do to have the quality happen. But we do everything remote because I feel like if you have to go somewhere physically to do something, then that is friction. And friction is bad. Friction slows things down. It may be something you're already nervous about doing, especially starting off. And so anything I can do to remove the friction, remove the repetitive, monotonous things that you have to do, the better your result is going to be. Okay. This is the type of gym where you don't actually have to go to the gym. Yeah. You just need to get on with your personal trainer remotely. And then you're provided with the system, both hardware, software, I'm assuming scripting of some kind to help the message come across. Is that all part of everything that you do? And then in terms of production, I'm assuming you then take that raw footage and create these 80 videos as an example in that scenario where that leader doesn't have to be an expert in d digital manipulation. Yeah, so there's several pieces there. One, as far as the scripting goes, I try and do some do it as similarly to a podcast as possible, where it's less about the specific scripting, because ultimately, like I made a little joke before, business owners aren't professional actors. Sure, getting them to read and deliver their lines usually makes them feel stiff and awkward. But yet, if you get them in a conversation, a coffee meeting, or some sort of meeting. They'll speak for days about the things that they're experts in, and they'll be able to produce that at 
produce that easily. And so part of it is putting the job on me to be able to actually ask the questions, not only the initial questions, but the secondary and tertiary questions that really unlock the gold of what's inside their head. And yeah. some of that's because some of that's because honestly, I'm not a video person. I'm not a video person. I never have been. And I just knew I needed to do this for myself. And as an entrepreneur who likes to figure things out, I was like, how can I do this for me? So it's dummy proof because I'm not a video person. How can I make that? And then put that in front of somebody to where I remove the psychological barriers. Cause like, as soon as you look in a cold dead camera lens, all of a sudden, like your heart freezes up, like you can feel it, right? You can Horrible. feel it right now, that yeah. feeling that you get. And now I have to get in front of this cold dead camera lens and deliver lines. But yet if I'm right in front of somebody, if I'm looking at them, if I'm having a conversation, it feels natural. It feels yeah. good. It feels easy. And if you produce and you sit down and you talk to somebody, if we can replicate that, then that's where stuff really shines. And I know enough about entrepreneurship, just having read tons of books, started companies, raised money, sold businesses. Like I can have those conversations with a lot of people and I'm just pretty curious. So I try and offload as much of that responsibility by asking questions to the person in a way that makes them feel comfortable, but also pulls out some of the gold. Drake, I love it. I've had experience creating content, looking into the lens of my iPhone, and it's, this sucks. This is yeah. not comfortable. And I know some people are just really comfortable just putting it on and going for it. Just not <laughs> something I'm comfortable with. And probably the majority of people are not. And the way you're talking about is so comfortable. We're doing it right now. Yeah, We're having exactly. a conversation. And to be able to create videos off this conversation, we do that for our own podcast. We create these little small clips for it. But as a leader who has a message, whether it be an internal company message that they want to pass through video and or external from a sales and marketing perspective or, or whatnot, it seems like such a natural, easy, comfortable process. So I love what you do. I want to learn more on a personal level after we have this conversation. But so you get these 80 videos. And what are you finding right now is the, I'm sure you're going to say it depends, but what are you finding as the right medium to distribute this content in terms of, is it LinkedIn? Is it Instagram? Is it Facebook? Is that, I'm sure it depends on industry and who the target is, but what do you do? What are you seeing the most part? The nice thing is right now we're at this kind of once in a decade opportunity with social media where all the platforms are fighting over the same property. They're yep. fighting over that video that is less than 60 seconds. Everybody at YouTube is fighting over something that's less than 90 seconds. And so the way that the social media algorithms have changed, because they're all fighting over the same real estate, you win because they're incentivized to show your video, interesting content to as many people as possible. I can break that down in a second if you want, but what we've been able to do because they're all fighting over the same stuff is we can actually go omni-channel instantaneously with the same stuff. And that's the beginning of it, right? If you look at people like entrepreneurs like Alex Hormozzi, or he's spending 40,000 a month on content creation. And because he's spending that much and dedicating a full day of the week to it, he's maybe able to parse out different videos and different stuff for different platforms. But he is, let's say, in stage two of this, and I'm focusing with most entrepreneurs who just want to get to stage one. But for an example, my what I've found is that over the last, since I started this, I pre-launched with some clients, but since we've been able to launch with them, I've gotten over 700, I think it's, we're probably closing in on 800,000 views since the end of November, of December. Wow. Wow. And so that's be partially because you are able to go on each channel and people are able to go on LinkedIn. They're able to go on Instagram. They're able to go on TikTok. They're able to go on YouTube. They're able to go on Facebook. And so it's really hot right now. And that's, like I said, what'll happen is because of everybody's going to short form video, they are trying to, for instance, let's talk about commitment. That's the easy way to think of it from the user's perspective. I go on Facebook, I see post, I click like, I maybe comment, I move on. That takes me 10, 15 seconds, if at all, if you just like two seconds, right? I on Instagram, I see photo, I click like, I move on, right? But if I'm gonna watch a video, I'm going to commit myself to 30, 60, 90 seconds of video. And many times you don't even know how long it is going to be. If I'm going to commit myself to that, I suddenly do not care at all about whether what my long lost friend from high school is posting. I don't care about what my grandma is posting about whatever political party is ruining America. I care about what I'm interested in. And so because of that, the follower account shifts 
to where you they're incentivized to show those videos outside of your existing network. So even people without large networks are able to get thousands of views without actually having a pre-built following. So it works well if you're beginning. Like I said, that guy that I told you made $80,000 in the first month of posting just from this stuff, he had two of his accounts were brand new, no followers at all. And his LinkedIn account wasn't some massive LinkedIn account, right? And so that's where the social media landscape is very unique in the way that the platforms are all having to compete with each other over the same medium and for the same attention because there's only a limited amount of it. And if you're good at, if you're able to produce interesting stuff, you will be able to capitalize on that. And with the model of doing it frequently and the idea of doing it as a gym, you are doing it more consistently, which means you're going to get better over time. And when you have a trainer and a coach who's actually able to help you get better, your what you produce now compared to what you'll produce in a year are drastically different. So I'm imagining in your system, what I've captured so far from our conversation would include some recommendations around lighting, around sound, around content, and around marketing. Are there Mm -hmm. other sections in what the system is that people use when they sign up to work with you? Or is it pretty much lighting, sound, content, and marketing? Uh, That's a lot of it. The biggest thing is editing, right? So we're editing all the videos for you. So you you come in, you sit down, you have an hour-long conversation with somebody, maybe an hour and a half, just depending on how long it goes, but usually hour-long conversation. And then seven business days later, you have an inbox full of clips that shows up. We can post them all for you. um, But that kind of turnaround time, if anybody's ever worked with an agency before, is that's unheard of to be able to produce that kind of stuff. That's really, most of it is done for you. Like you said, there's not a ton of extra stuff. The content, the strategy of what we're going to produce, what do I even talk about? That's what I'm helping offload and work with you to accelerate that. So you're not having to come up with everything on your own. We go through a process of discovery with that. As far as the actual marketing, usually it just comes down to posting. And then there's the part of there's the part of actually optimizing your profiles so that they actually funnel people to the things, the places that you want them to go, as opposed to just not giving indicators of what a next step is for somebody who might be interested in you, which is something most profiles do a really poor job of. I'm still in the process of optimizing mine because we looked at LinkedIn as I've talked to plenty of LinkedIn people on my podcast and their big thing is most people treat it like a resume and entrepreneurs don't need a resume because we're not looking for a job. We need you to know what to do next. And did you say in terms of optimizing the profiles, there's a difference between funneling versus just telling somebody what the next step is? I'm not sure I know what the difference between those is. Can you help? Sure. So usually the profile says a whole bunch. Most profiles say a whole bunch about me, right? There's nothing that would indicate, hey, customer, here's how I can help you. So if you looked at your LinkedIn profile, a lot of LinkedIn profiles just show, hey, here's my job history. Here's my cover letter resume in the about section that I would do. Instead of doing that, what we need to do is someone who has landed on your LinkedIn profile is interested in what you, they're interested in you. They're interested in what you do. They're interested in possibly working with you. Where do they go to find more? Where do they go to find more videos? Where do they go to actually get in contact with you? How do I know that you offer something that I might be interested in? If you just show me your company name, maybe I can figure it out. Maybe I can't, but in any sort of thing that that you're doing, any sort of sales cycle, it's incrementally bringing the customer closer to you as opposed to trusting them to make the gap from just discovery to buying. And so anything we can do to add small incremental steps to move them along that sales cycle from, I just met you and hey, this is crazy to now I'm a customer, is that's really the idea. So an example of a small incremental step I can imagine might be, Somebody goes to a LinkedIn profile, instead of just having it look like a resume, it looks, here's how I can help you, Mm -hmm. which might include a video link to one of the videos that maybe you took with that client. And that small incremental step is getting them to the video link. Yeah. And then what's, what are other examples of what happens from there in a funnel that's a small incremental step to breadcrumb 
the client along and before they know it, they're really interested in talking to you. What are those other examples of small incremental steps? For most people that would, or for a lot of people that would involve something like a lead magnet. So sometimes that's a free PDF or a free training that just helps them educate and understand. Usually it's an exchange of value in some sort of way, but instead of doing it at a coffee meeting, which takes an hour of your time, you're able to put them to something that once again works time asynchronously, um, where they're able to consume at their leisure and they're able to consume at your leisure too, because you're not having to actively be there. But then by doing that and offering that exchange of value, the same way when we're at a coffee meeting with somebody, we're talking to them about their problem. We're helping, we're educating. That's usually how the process goes. Instead of doing that one-on-one, we're able to do that with, like I said, a written document or a video training or something like that. And then after that, being like, hey, here's the next step. The next step after you've consumed this might be if you put them on an email list, then you're able to nurture them. Or if you are able to put them directly into, hey, here's a free call that I can consult with you. And that usually is where you're able to convert them. And so there's two different ways that you can do it. Like I said, many times you're able to put them on a list that can nurture them further. That just depends. Like I said, that one actually depends on who you are, what you're selling and what kind of just what your customer journey looks like. I'm tracking with you. So somebody goes to LinkedIn. It's not a resume. Here's how I can help you. Oh, interesting video looks like something I want to click based on the title or based on the two second scroll that I saw. I click on that. There's a video for 30 seconds. After that, there's a free PDF if you want to learn more or a free training or examples that you gave. And those are areas where you do the education. That's that template typical education that's done in a client meeting. And that's where you genuinely exchange value. You're giving them value that they could just get the free PDF and move along and they got value. Or if they're interested in more, there's this get a free consulting call or maybe join my email list and you'll continue to get more. So I think I'm getting how this kind of strings along in a really easy way. Yeah. And one thing to to mention, most people that are, a lot of people are concerned about give, giving away too much. Really what you're doing is you're talking about the what they need to do, not how they need to do it. People come to you for the how. People, information has this interesting thing that Alex Ramosi talks about this, is information is really valuable before you know it, but after you know it, it drops, the value drops off precipitously. And so what you're doing is you're just talking about what you need to do and you're educating them on the next steps. You're not telling them how to do it because people don't, because of that massive amount of information and the way information has been commoditized across the internet, because I can go on YouTube and learn a million things for free because of that, they're not paying for the information. They're paying for the accountability and the implementation in their specific situation. And so you're actually able to draw in customers that are qualified because they now know what to do. So when you say, hey, do this, and here is how we're going to do it when you're actually selling them on it, they're not concerned about it because they already know, oh, this is natural. This is not a sharp turn because I've already been educated on what I'm going to do. Rich, are you, do you know who Alex Ramosi is? No. Drake's mentioned his name a few times and I follow Alex on YouTube specifically. And he produces an insane amount of content, very bold content. He obviously is a guy who knows the gym business, speaking to the physical gym business. I used to be in that industry, but he's popped out of nowhere. And he actually owns acquisition.com. So they're a holding company that goes and buys companies and helps them exponentially grow. And uh, yeah, he's basically been a little bit of the new coming king of content post Gary V era. But I was going to say he's the next version of Gary. Yeah, basically that's the way I look at him. But Drake, you've mentioned his name several times. I'm curious as to your perspective of him specifically and the content he's generating. It seems like he's a model for who you talk to your clients about. Look what this guy's doing. T- tell me more about why you use him as a model and why you refer to him a few times. One, because he's trending, like he's trending, he's very popular. It's the guy has reached crazy amounts of people and lots of people, like you said, they've seen his content, they've seen what it is. And I think one of the things that I like about him is that he's very different than Gary. 
Gary Vee's great. He gives, I think, more tangible value to business owners. So obviously he knows the gym space really well. But when you grow a company, when you grow multiple companies to, in his case now, it's I think it's upwards of like $200 million, you learn a lot about business in the meantime. And what I've loved, one of the things I've loved about him is one of the things I want to do in my life is have a private equity fund, right? And I love the way that he is building value in that space. And he's just giving a lot of it away for free because most of the people that are watching his videos are not his customer. He wants to give away the keys to help you get to from zero to $3 million so that then he can buy you at three and take you to 30 or 50. And I think that's a really important thing. And it's a unique paradigm shift to the way that we think about content. And when you're delivering that much value, it does. It's just a really good example of when you're delivering that much value, the algorithms really want to take you and put you in front of as many people as possible. Now he's given stats and for the amount of exposure he's getting now that he's built organically would cost him $2 million a day if he was paying for it. And so I think he's just a really good example of highlighting how one, it's not too late because he, he came out of nowhere. Like you've said, it's only been over the past, like I think less than 18 months, he's gone just skyrocketed and it shows, he talks in detail about how creating content at volume is a really important thing in a way that's different than Gary Vee did. And so that's part of why, because I think he's he's been a poster child of doing this and there's multiple people that are doing it. Gary Vee doesn't talk about the fact that now Gary Vee's companies are worth a crap load of money, but Gary doesn't mention it quite as specifically. And he's not quite, he's just like social, beyond social. Whereas Alex is, let me give you some real fundamental things about how your buyer thinks about this process, how your business can run better if you do these things, how to think about pricing, how to do this. And so I enjoy the tactical stuff and the strategic stuff mixed together way more than just, hey, document everything that you do. Because that works for Gary because he has this great sense of what to do, but it doesn't really help you or me who are starting at a lower level as beginners really understand what we need to do and why we need to do it. Yeah. Drake, you mentioned something I just want to check on before we close out this conversation. You aspire to have a private equity fund. I'm assuming a holding company of small to medium sized businesses that you invest in and have ownership Mm -hmm. in. Why? And where are you at on that journey? I, why? Honestly, I've had several businesses that I have jumped in on as or businesses or projects where I've jumped in on them in, in previous employment and stuff like that. And for the longest time, I would trust the expert, so to speak. And because it was like, oh, I don't, when I was younger, right? When I was younger, oh, I don't know. I don't have experience in this. And so what would happen is in the project, they would you know, go to the experts, trust all this. They would spend the money that was normally allocated for it. And then they would run out of money. And then I would have to go in and fix everything. Yep. And I would have to try and pull it out. And I was like, okay, why am I doing this? Starting at the upward, at the this part, going through the valley with them and then having to bring it up. It's much better if I could just start at the valley, buy it at the valley and then yep. ride the write everything up. So that's part of it. I've just seen that in my life. I'm like, okay, instead of doing that, why don't I, the way I've done it before, why don't I do it in a different way? And so as far as the journey, some of it started with, I think that media and education, like I said, media education and discovery are really going to be big components of any business that gets, or I shouldn't say any business, a lot more businesses than we expect in the future. Because with AI, discovery is going to be very different. And I think with AI coming on, we're going to really, we're going to just assume that businesses are using AI. And so how are we going to make the decision process to between discovery and selection? And I think that's going to come still with a human connection and how, what's the best way to do that right now in a very crowded world? I think that is content. And so I wanted to start with content to understand how that is so that when I am able to buy my first company or, and build the fund, one, I'm able to raise money easier because I have a following. My brand would also be an asset, right? Sure. And then whatever company I have, I've built in a distribution network to where I can take whatever I buy and put it through the distribution network. Because it's really what building content is. You're building out a distribution network for yourself. Yep. Love it. Good luck on that journey. This was a great conversation. 
Richie, maybe seeing a lot more content of me out there soon if I start working with Drake. I think a lot of entrepreneurs need this and they're not sure where to go and how to do it. And it gets so complex. And Rich, what kind of microphone do we use? What's the lighting? You and I have had these conversations over and over yeah. again. Having that personal trainer can be really beneficial. How can people learn more? Where do they need to go? Honestly, my LinkedIn is probably the best, the best spot right now. And that's just my name, Drake Cyphers, D-R-A-K-E, and Cyphers, S-C-I-F-E-R-S. And yeah, I'm happy to talk to anybody, even if it's just, even if it's just, hey, give me some advice on, on, on what it is. But I love talking to people and helping them solve problems. Great. Well, thanks for joining us today and best of luck on your journey. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Please stick around for a few more minutes while Rich and I break down this episode. John, I could not love more a quote that I wrote down from Drake, and I want to read it to you. Leaders offload the responsibility of good content to me by me asking really good questions. I'm naturally curious and unlock the gold. Oh my gosh, that, I almost want to put that on my wall of what we do in our podcast. Isn't that what we want? People come on our podcast and we want them to feel like they can offload the responsibility of good content because we're going to ask good questions and follow-up questions because we're naturally curious and we hope to unlock the gold as to what's happening with them and their mind or their journey. That really resonated with me. Yeah, absolutely. Very thoughtful conversation about content that quite honestly, I hadn't really thought about before, but I did mention the conversation. I've tried to create content before mediocre. I was told, Hey, create content. I was like, all right, I'm going to create some content. I wasn't really sure what to do. Even you and I, I had somebody comment the other day, Rich, about somebody who's listened to almost all of our episodes who commented about how different our episodes are today than when they were, when they first started. When we first started recording this podcast, we didn't have microphones. We we're going right off our computers. We didn't really have any setup whatsoever. We've been slowly learning over time what to do better and better, but to have that gym, to have that physical trainer who can help you generate really meaningful content, whether it be for your website, for your social, for really just communication with your own team, even depending on how large your organization is. It's something I feel like entrepreneurs and leaders need to do more and more of and need to learn more and more because video is not going away. It is the way it's going to work for here on out. The message being sent here of you need to go to the gym, the pun in his name resonated with me. It's just something that I was like, yeah, you know what? I really do need to go to the content gym because I'm, I suck at it. Yeah, I think the name really communicates what needs to be done in this particular space of marketing is continue going. I did. It's a that is a clever name. I like that. And you know, what we like to do, John, is get to some real tangible takeaways that our listeners can implement today. Yes. If they want to reach out to our guests, often, and many of them do, some, sometimes, many of them have over the course of the podcast, but we want our listeners to take away something they can do. And I feel like they got that, and I got that out of this conversation. When we went through what those, what I call the breadcrumbs were, yeah. and go, hey, go to your LinkedIn profile, optimize that profile. And make it so that if a customer comes on, they can see very clearly how they can be helped. Then maybe go to a video, then maybe go to a free PDF and training, then maybe have them get in the funnel of an email list or a consulting call. And I really liked what he said is tell people what needs to be done versus the how. And yeah. that is part of what that draw is because the ubiquity of information being available all over the place, he said, it's not about the information that I give people. It's about the implementation in their particular scenario. And I think that is really good stuff between mindset of it, of what to give and how much you should give. And then just tactically, how do you go about, what do you do with that? This had some real tangible takeaways I felt. Yeah, no, I love the way, how many times have I gone through that funnel myself? I see something, I deal with it deeper. Now I'm on the website. Now there's a free toolkit. Now I'm putting in my email address. Then I get the free toolkit. Now I'm getting their newsletter. I've fallen into that funnel many times and it works. It really works to provide people with the right flow of content and information, database building type of stuff. So I really love that. And I think to your point on content, Rich, con and Drake said it as well, content is everywhere. 
there's probably a million videos on YouTube on how you can create better content. I can go watch all of them and still not create better content. Having that coach there, right? You could go watch YouTube videos on how to work out, but people still get physical trainers and they still go to the gym and work with somebody. So that's, I think, the big difference that Drake offers here in this scenario is helping someone through the process because sometimes you're trying to figure it out by yourself and, and ultimately you just don't do it because it's too difficult or too hard. So I really love that aspect of what Drake brings and may have to work with him myself, get some more content created. I personally use a personal trainer and... I could go to the gym. We use all the same equipment that's available if I weren't to pay for a personal trainer. But I do pay for a personal trainer for a number of reasons. I want to know how to use the equipment correctly so I don't injure myself. And I also want some of the accountability of somebody's waiting for me. I also want to have an investment of money so that I'm more likely to follow through. Those are three reasons why I use a personal trainer. And I think that could transfer right over to businesses working with Drake, where wouldn't you want to go so you know how to use the equipment you have? And wouldn't you want to go because there's accountability to somebody waiting for you because you know you need to get out more marketing videos. Yeah. And this will help you do that. And by putting a financial investment in it, you're even more likely to follow through. So. When you talked about that, like literally transfer over with the gym and a personal trainer, I was like, yeah, yeah, that is, it is incredibly similar on why you would want to use somebody like Drake. Very well said.